clay, when it dries, it, as long as it doesn't get wet, it can last forever. They found carved clay pieces in Paleolithic, that's older than Neolithic caves. That's just, just like the day it was made. Bone dry, never got wet. That's it forever. And then because firing it, it turns to ceramic and then that has its properties even more so. So this is bone dry, this is unfired. They would call it terra cruda instead of terracotta because it's not fired, crude as in uh, the Latin word for unfired. So you could not call this ceramic because it's not fired. Bernini would sometimes not fire his work, his models, the Italian Baroque sculptor, and he would quickly do them in clay and then carve in marble, but he said the life and the feeling was in these clay bozzetti, that's a clay model, sometimes terracotta, not fired, sometimes terracotta fired. So what I'm gonna do now is build up this piece, I have my bozzetti, so I can work out a lot of things in that. So when I'm building this, sometimes I just build a big piece without a model and I just go for it. I just go, I keep my edges wet and I uncover, get, let all this set up and you can just have something bone dry in the bottom and still accept clay. It can be a gradation of dryness. Here it's very wet, you can see I can kind of move it, it has a sort of smacking, slapping wet sound. You can still move it, completely move it around and change the shape. Or my, my rib tool is my very favorite thing. I think of printmaking when the lines follow the contour. The flat area, and it's rounding here. And when you get these fields, it's like a Van Gogh painting, you know, where he's sort of painting the energy of the wheat and the sky. You're bringing these rhythms throughout the whole piece, so everything starts to flow together. The 1% for the Arts is a national search. It's for the Rhode Island Veterans Home. It's a massive building. It's the size of three football fields. And I'm doing the entrance lobby piece over the fireplace and the library. I'm doing a timeline and um, the veterans and the visitors are invited to actually touch. They're going to be, uh, it's going to be a clay ribbon embedded in stone with impressions begging to be touched timeline of the wars of the United States, starting with the revolution and ending with the war on terrorism. Very excited to be part of a Rhode Island 1% for the arts. This is going to need a little help right here. My dad taught me how to hammer and nail. We used to build decks in California from the Santa Cruz Mountains. We we're always building decks. It's all about decks out there. Boulder Creek, California in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Boulder Creek is a little town in the Redwoods, a uh, gateway to Big Basin, uh, Redwood State Park. I grew up there, so I went to high school, you know, kindergarten through high school, and then I went on, off to college. Chico State University for undergrad, got my degree in sculpture, and in England, Buckinghamshire College of, in Buckinghamshire, in the Greenbelt, and then RISD. I came out here for graduate school. And then we bought this property in uh, Warren, this building, and started my kind of permanent studio stay in one place for a while. This is my dream studio. And I have a studio on Prunes Island. I basically go out there for the summer. When I'm out on the island, it's all about being outside. You know, there's a lot of gorgeous places to go right out the door. It's my plein air time out there. Terracotta Fiance was very prevalent in the turn of the century and it was exterior architectural clay. Three-dimensional is a little more rare. The, the, the Fiance is really known for its relief and cladding a building. You've probably walked by brick buildings and didn't realize they thought it was stone, but it's actually clay that you're seeing on these buildings. 
So this lion was on the roof of the Audrain building in Newport. There were uh, 12 lions that were destroyed in the 38 hurricane. They've renovated the building right next to the Tennis Hall of Fame and recently opened it as the Audrain Automobile Museum. And they commissioned me to recreate these lions that were lost. The only record they had was a postcard. But they blew them up and blew them up and the silhouette told us a lot. They were hammered into press molds. Like, this is my press mold. See that ball down there? Clay's pounded into it up to an inch thick. This is a 16 piece mold. These lions have to stand up to our weather. They're gonna be balls of ice on these lions and salt air hitting them and storms and hurricanes and hopefully mine will make it through the next hurricane. My lions are all white with a blue and green shields. That's what they wanted. I have 14 matching lions. They're all a little different, but they're the same general shape. So all of mine have a little bit of a different expression. Each lion's eyes will have a different expression and the gesture a tiny bit different maybe. I have about four things going right now in my studio, four commi different commissions, and um, I'm creating what I call the rain catchers. They catch the rain. They also catch water from thin air. Three different ones based on three different plants that are known for catching rain particularly well. So this particular piece is based on the maguey. It's ceramic and metal, and it has a rain barrel that goes inside of it. And I found that this particular design, it really caught the fog and the moisture in the air and all the, the condensation. I learned from them and now I'm making a permanent one out of aluminum. Well, I'm looking at nature, biomimicry, but I don't know of anybody making these rain catchers, so I'm just pioneering away here. But for design and art, I just, it, you know, I feel like art, the design and art are important even if I have to sacrifice a little bit of efficiency, because see how that really makes it in terms of the visual aspects of this being exciting. And I love to travel. I like to go down to Mexico. I, I, work, I go out to Ojai, California every year to teach at the Beatrice Wood Center. And um, Beatrice Wood is a mentor of mine. I never met her in real life, but I've gotten to know her posthumously, working in her studio and with her tools. And it's such an honor and a privilege to be every year go out there and teach, show, and work at the Ojai Beatrice Woods Center. I like to go and work in other places. And I have that kind of love of travel, but I always love coming home to my family and my studio and my village. Warren community. Rhode Island has a great community. New England has a great community. It's got to have the visual element. That to me is still the set the, the beauty, something that appeals and satisfies the design part of the of the brain. There's there's that, there's an importance there too, uh, in terms of sort of satisfaction to, uh, I guess they say the happier you are, you know, the longer you live, the more healthy you are. <laughs> we certainly strive for design as humans, that's for sure.